Welcome to section 4.7, day one, the law. Today we are going to solve oblique triangles by using the law of sines. Before now, everything we've dealt with has been right triangles, and now we're going to work with triangles that are not right triangles. So the law of sines. If we have a triangle ABC with side lengths ABC, then when we want to set it up, we have portions. Sine of angle A over A is the same as sine of angle B over B, which is the same as sine of angle C over C. These are all proportions. Another way to do this is you can flip them all. So if you're looking for angles, we set it up this way. If we're looking for missing side lengths, we flip them all. Because they're proportions, we can do this. It makes it easier if you do this when you are solving for a side length. All right, we are use this law of sines if we are given one of the three things below. We get two angles and a non-included side, so angle, angle, side. We're given two angles and the included side, angle, side, angle. Or we're given two sides and a non-included angle, side, side, angle. Law of sines, I think, is relatively easy, and now I will show you how we apply it. So we have this triangle. We have says solve triangle LMN, round side length to the nearest tenth, and angle measures to the nearest degree. The first thing I will look at for this when using our law of sines is what's the easiest thing to solve for? We are given two angle measures. We need angle N. That's gonna be the easiest thing to look for. So angle N is what we're looking for. This is relatively easy because triangles have 180 degrees in them. So we just subtract off the two given angles that we are given here. So we have 180 minus 29 minus 112. And we'll find out that angle N is 39 degrees. All right, now we're going to use our law of sines. We're looking for side, length, side lengths N and M. We can do either one first. It doesn't matter. I'll do them in alphabetical order. So we want M is what we're looking for over the sine of angle M, 112 degrees. And we have already that 22 over angle L. So we use our opposite side from the angle. So that's why we have 22 over sine of 29. And we're gonna solve for M. So M equals 22 sine of 112 all over the sine of 29. And then we use our calculator. It does say to round to the nearest tenth. Make sure when we are doing this, we are now going back to using degrees, so make sure your calculator is in degree mode or you will get answers that make no sense. So our side length M is 42.1 if we round to the nearest tenth. All right, now we're going to do side N is what we're looking for. So we have N over the sine of our angle N, our sine of angle 39 degrees. It equals, I'm going to use the same setup, 22 over sine of 29, side length L over sine of L. This gives us N equal to 22 sine 39 over sine 29. And again, when you use your calculator, you should get 28.6. When you are done with this, make sure I have a clear understanding of what your answers are. Angle N is 39 degrees. Uh, M is 42.1. Don't maybe go hunting for these things and trying to figure out what is what. This is 28.6. Those are my missing pieces and we have solved the triangle. All right, that's a basic problem using the law of sines. All right, so here we have a word problem. It says the angle of elevation from the top of the building to a hot air balloon is 62 degrees. The angle of elevation to the hot air balloon from the top of a second building is that is 650 feet due east is 49 degrees. Find the distance from the hot air balloon to each building. I've already drawn a picture. You do these word problems, draw pictures, so you can visualize what's going on. We have 650 feet between the buildings. We have our two angle measures in here as we look from our buildings at the balloon. So we need to find our X and our Y. So right now we don't have enough to do it. We need to find angle Z first. 
So angle Z is just 180 minus our two known measurements, 62, and we're also gonna subtract up 49. And we will find that angle Z is 69 degrees. We can use this to find X and Y now. And again, I'll do them alphabetical order. If I'm looking for X, so it'll be X over sine of 49, the angle opposite of it. And we're gonna have, we have to use our known side over a now known angle Z. So this is 650 over sine of 69. We're gonna solve for X, so we get X equals 650 sine 49 over sine 69. And then we use our calculator. We find that we got 525.5 feet. Do the same thing to find, solve for y. y is over the sine of 62. This is again equals 650 over sine of 69. This becomes y equals 650 sine of 62 over sine of 69. And we do this on your calculator, you find you get 614.7 feet. Again, make sure I understand what your answers are. This is my Y. This is my X. This is my angle Z. Actually, I don't need that part for an answer. I just need these two parts right here because it did not ask for the angle there at the top. Okay, that's basic law of signs. Not too hard to use. Now we're gonna use um, an ambiguous case, we call it. We use the law of signs with. So ambiguous case. So if we're given A, B, and angle A, this is side, side, angle. Uh, we have two different things, that, we have a couple of different things that can happen, actually. And it shows that sine of A is H over B, so the height of our triangle is B over sine A, that's how you find it. You need to find the height. So if A is acute, that means our angle is less than 90 degrees for angle A. If A is less than B and A is less than H, we don't have a solution. We cannot make a triangle that will work. If A is less than B and A equals H, we have a solution. We will actually have a right triangle. If A is less than B and A is greater than H, we can actually make two triangles out of this. We will see one of those later. And if A is greater than or equal to B, we will only have one solution. So A is our, would be our longest side, side of our triangle that we know so far. If we are obtuse, that means angle A is either greater than or equal to 90 degrees. If A is less than B, we cannot make a triangle because we cannot get back down to the lower base. And if A is greater than B, we will get one. So when we look at these different triangles, you will see we have stuff that doesn't work. We just have no solution. We can make one triangle or two. That's when we are given side, side angle is when this can happen. Okay, so let's do one of these. These ones are a little more involved. When we do anything with the uh, law of sines, law of cosines, we'll learn tomorrow. When we are solving for things, it'll say to put our answers as like round to the nearest degree, round to the nearest tenth. When we are solving things though, don't do rounding until you get your final answers. Always wait. If we want to go to the nearest tenth, at least go to the hundredth or thousandth for your, when you're doing calculations. Otherwise you will get wrong answers. Don't use rounded answers for doing solvings, only use them for final answers. You'll see what I mean, what I mean here in a minute. So we want to find all the solutions for this given triangle, if possible. If no solution exists, write no solution. Round side length to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. So one of the first things we want to do is find our height so we can do some comparisons to see if we can actually solve it or not. We know that A is less than 90 degrees, so it's an acute angle. We know that A is less than B. We wanna see what happens if we find our H, what we get for H. And if you recall, it said on the last slide that H equals B sine A. We are given the angle A, we are given the B, this would be angle B over here. So that means this is side B. So we're gonna have height equal to 25 
sine of 63. And when you do this, you will find that your height is 22.3. Well, now we have that A is less than B, and A is also less than H. And if you look on your last sheet, that means there is no solution. If you actually went through and tried to solve this using the law of signs, and you actually went through the motions, which you can do, you would also find that you would get a domain error on your calculator. A domain error means it's not possible. So one of those things you do first is look for that height, make sure it satisfies our conditions. If you went through and tried to solve it, you would get an error on your calculator telling you that there is no way to solve it. Here we have the ambiguous case where we have either one or no solution. So we want to find all solutions for the given triangle, if possible. If no solution exists, write no solution. And we're going to round our side lengths to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. On our triangle, the angle A is 105 degrees, side A is 73, and side B is 55. So first thing I want to find out is if this is actually going to have a solution or not. Our angle measure is larger than 90 degrees. So we have an obtuse triangle because angle A is greater than 90 degrees. We also have that A is larger than B because 73 is larger than 55, which means we will have one solution. All right, we have three parts we need to look for. We need to look for angle B, C, and side C. Those are the three pieces that we are missing. Those are the three pieces we need to find. I'm going to look for my angles first. And I do my things usually in alphabetical order, so we'll look for angle B. To find angle B, we take the sine of B over its side length of 55. This is equal to the sine of A, which is 105 degrees, over its side length of 73. We're going to rewrite this. We've got to solve for the angle B. So sine of B is 55 sine 105 all over 73. We then take the inverse sine. Because remember, inverse sine and sine cancel each other out. We take the inverse sine of both sides. And we get B equals inverse sine 55 sine 105 over 73. This is all inside the inverse sine. I do recommend that you do not do any of the mathematics until you get to the end, actually you put them in your calculator. So put this whole thing in your calculator and you find that angle B is 46.6. 9.8 degrees. When we do this also, don't round anything until you actually give your final answer. Use these decimals when you solve for other angles or other side lengths. For angle C, all we have to do is take our angles. We have 180 degrees for a triangle minus the two angles we know. We have 105 for angle A and we have 46.698, which I can round to 46.7. So we're on to the hundredth, it'll get to 46.70. And when we do this, we find that angle C is 28.3 degrees. Now that we have the two angles, we can find our missing side length. We'll look for side C. So if we're looking for C, we take C over the sine of C. And then when you take one of our other angles with sides, I always use the one that has not been messed with, one we haven't had a solve or round for. So in this case, I'm going to take 73 over sine 105. When I solve for C, we get C is 73 sine 28.3 all over sine 105. When we do this on our calculators, we get back 35.82.
And now we want the answers. Put them in a place where it's easy to tell me, so it's easy for me to tell what you guys have for your answers. So angle B, angle C, and side C. We are rounding the nearest degree for angles, so this is 47 degrees. Uh, the other one is angle C is 28 degrees. And side C is rounded the nearest tenth, 35.8. And we have solved our triangle. All right, so here we have the ambiguous case. We're going to get two solutions. Again, we want to look at what happens to our height to see if we actually get two solutions. And if we do this, you will find that we have indeed two solutions. If we actually solve for H, you'd get H as 24 sine 45. And you will find out that this is 17 roughly. And A is less than C. And A is greater than the height. So we will have two solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on one triangle at a time. And instead of having to redo the slide right away for the first triangle, so I'm going to look for this larger triangle first. So I'll be looking for angle C. I will be looking for side B. I will also need to find angle B up here at the top. So I need to find two angles and our missing side. The part I can look for first, I have A and its side. I have the side C, but I'm missing the angle C. So the only thing I can solve for right now is angle C. So I will do angle C first. So we have the sine of C over 24 has to equal the sine of 45 over side A, which is 18. That means that the sine of C is equal to 24 sine 45 over 18. And that C, if we take the inverse sine of both sides, is the inverse sine of what's on the right here, 24 sine 45. You'll notice that I'm not actually taking the sine of 45. I'm just going to plug this whole thing in my calculator. I'm going to plug in inverse sine 24 sine 45 over 18. And when I do this, I get 70.528. Approximately. I'm rounding to the third decimal right now. So we're going to use this, and I'll actually round to this tenth to the tenth for my next part, I'm gonna find angle B. This is my angle C that we found. So angle B is just 180 minus my 45 minus, and I'm gonna make this 70.53. And this will give us the angle measure of 64.47 degrees. Okay, so that gives me my two angle measures that I was missing. And now I need my side B. So if I want to find side B, I use B over my angle B. So sine of 64.47. This is going to equal, and I'm going to use my non-rounded pieces again, my side A over the sine of 45. When I do this, I get B equal to 18 sine 64.47 all over the sine of 45. And I solve this on my calculator. And when I do this, I get 22.97, which rounds to 23.0. So let's see if I can find a place to write all this down. So when I'm done, I have, I found it at angle B equals 71 degrees approximately angle c 64 degrees and then side b 23.0 these are the missing pieces right there my triangle is now solved so make sure you indicate at the end your rounded answers do not round until you get to the end now we have to do the second triangle. This is just triangle number one. So I'm gonna to go to another slide to do triangle number two. Okay, so we had our triangle. 
Now we can solve for our second triangle. From the previous slide, we know that this angle here was 70.53 degrees. With this triangle, when we had this two dashed lines here, we have both of those are size of 18. So we have an isosceles triangle. That means these angles are congruent. So that means this angle is also 70.5 degrees. So if we want to find this angle C right here, we just take 180. minus our known angle of 70.53. And when you do this, you get 109.47 degrees. So we have two angles now. We have the 45 degree angle for A. We have 109.47 for C. We can take and find angle B. It's 180 minus 109.47 minus angle A of 45. And when we do this, we get 25.53 degrees. We have now found two of our angles. We still need to find a, a side length B down here. Well, we have angle B, so we can use that, and I'll use the sides for angle A and side A. So if I want to find B, I'm going to take B over the sine of B, which is 25.53. We set this equal to the A, which is 18 for the side A, over sine 45, solve for B. So B is 18 sine 25.53 over sine 45. And when we plug this into our calculator, we should get 10.97. All right, so we found our three missing parts. Now we have to do is we have our final answer. So angle C, if rounded, is 109 degrees. Angle B, when rounded, is 26 degrees. And our side B, when rounded, is 11.0, when you round to the nearest tenth. Since we're on to the nearest tenth, you need to put the tenth digit in there. As it lets everybody know we round to the nearest tenth. That is the second triangle that's created when we have this, these measurements for our sides and our angle. So we have two solutions. One from the last slide and this solution. That is all for section 4.7 day one. That was using the law of signs. Make sure you're showing your work. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.